Made of coins? Yep. Huh. Oh, yeah, it's Alabama. Great. That's cool. Yeah. You do have the air going, I see. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it wouldn't get nearly as hot without the air. Yeah. Do you have to have a special permit to do this uh, stuff here? So we do have a hot work permit. We do a lot of welding as well. Uh, and so you need a hot work permit if you want to use uh, gas storages. Uh, in Dallas, at least, uh, Dallas City, at least, Dallas County. Uh, some other cities have different regulations. But for Coal Forge, there's no, in North Texas at least, in actually all of Texas, there's no regulations on Coal Forge. So you can put one of these in the back of Oh, that's what this, that's exactly what's going to happen. Awesome. Your bottle, I think, just melted or something. I don't know. Holy crap. So hot, it's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. Did you bring it work? No. Melted his bottle. <laughs> Big bubble. I, I heard it. I heard it go, pssst. It's like, whoops. <laughs> Yeah. If you guys want to see anything specific, let us know. Uh, but we're the blacksmith here. We have uh, classes every uh, every other Sunday. Yeah, tomorrow's a class, and uh, every other Sunday after that. So we'll show you how to get started doing blacksmithing. Uh, and ideally, you have a project in mind. And we'll uh, show you how to complete that project, whatever it happens to be. 
Uh, the people that teach here, we have a committee of course, like all makerspace <laughs> groups. Uh, primarily the teachers here also teach at Berkeley and College, or our TAs for our collective master who teaches out there. So we do those uh, every semester. So if you wanted to get into even more depth on doing really cool stuff, uh, go out there and, and get more stuff and then use this as the uh, place to come and actually do it. So over here is a few of our example pieces that we've made over you know, the last year or so. Some of them are a little older than that, but, but primarily we make tools, so you can make your own hammers, chisels, punches, uh, tongs, so all the things that you would normally use as a blacksmith. Uh, one of the great things about being a blacksmith is, well, you can make most all your own tools, including up to your anvil, though I haven't tried to do one of those things. But hopefully one of these days. Alright, so I'm just going to make some sparks here. So you can, that's what's called forging, so you're changing the shape of the metal. So in this case we took it from a round bar down to a square point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and round that out real quick for more project. I think I failed to mention my... I'm John. Hi, Hi everybody. This is Sarah. Hi. Hi. So now we're going to go ahead and forge it from a square point down into a round uh, taper. So we're going to come in on each of those four points, break it down into a little facet until I have a stop sign, an octagon. Once you got a good octagon and all the facets are the same size, then it's really easy to yank it round. And if you're more patient, then you can go ahead and take it to a 16-sided polygon, but uh, I'm not that patient. <laughs> So that's coming along. We need more and more heat to get it done. Why, that's sharp. Um, it's reasonably sharp. Don't touch it, but uh, well, because it is hot. I bet it still could poke some hot. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so generally, we don't try to make things too sharp right off of the anvil. Um, but you can bring it down to a needle sharp point if you wanted to for a particular project. Um, but usually you want to file it down after you've done your forging. So you want to get down to a clean metal again so you don't want to be oxidized or uh, form around the outside of the metal. Phil, he's another one of the instructors here. Hi, Phil. Hello. I kind of forgot what day it was. <laughs> it was Saturday. Did you make a rings out of points? I did. Yeah, that was a fun little project. Not as much blacksmithing as it is uh, just metalworking, but right, right. but it's pretty fun. 
One of the cool things about that particular design on how to do that is that uh, you get to see the words on both sides, on, both sides. on the yeah. inside and the outside. I watched a YouTube video on that. It, Very was, cool. it was awesome. I want to try it. Lots of fun. Yeah, it looked like it was fun. How heavy is that anvil? Uh, this one? Um, probably 180, 190. We've got uh, five anvils here, so they range from uh, a little over 100 pounds up to. Uh, yeah, this one's one of the larger ones, almost 200 pounds. Why? I'm going to make a sleep. How long did it take to make the rose? It could be a very efficient rose. So to make the rose, the, the majority of the time was spent on that one little piece that you never see. Because <laughs> that was actually what we were doing for class, this is a forge welded collar. So that took more time than all of the rest of this. Um, but you can do all the rest of this in, in a few hours, so like four hours. How do you make it? So this is done with uh, sheet steel. So what we do, we have a cutout, and I can bring out the cutout pieces. So each one of them is a texture, and you fold them up, and you scroll them around, and you stick it onto uh, your stem, and you rivet it down. You can see right there in the middle, there's another little piece of metal. So that's riveting all those plates together and then pull them all up and make them all good. Yeah, this stuff out here you guys are welcome to pick up and, and take a look at. Thank you, baby. Uh, how often do you do uh, the blacksmith stuff here? Uh, we do classes uh, every other Sunday, so twice a month or so. Okay. And then if you're a member, you have access to the equipment and the space 24-7, uh, so you can come out and use it anytime you want. Okay. Wow. So the only thing we ask is that you come to a class first, and we'll take you through the startup and shutdown sort of stuff and the safety stuff uh, during that and get you some basic training. Okay. And then you can come out and explore and try out a whole bunch of cool stuff. It's awesome. I like welding and uh, metal fabrication. A, a good adjacent skill. So yeah, it's just I don't have somewhere where I can practice that. practice and be loud and grind and cut and play music. And there we go. This is a, a great place for you. There's a whole room dedicated to nothing but that. Yeah, so the uh, metal working room in there. I saw that. I was like heavy. And yeah. Welders, grinders, so sanders, so all sorts. Of I have so many projects that I want to do that I can't because I don't have a plasma cutter and an angle grinder can only do so much. Yeah, it takes so long. Yeah, it's so much longer. I, I cut out a Batman symbol on the front of my truck, so the, the grill is actually a Batman symbol. It, it lights up orange when you hit a little light. All right, you hit the little switch. Yeah, I took out the cigarette lighter and I put a little switch there and it, it lights up orange at night. So. Uh, but I did that with an angle grinder. It would have been a lot easier with the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh Even oxy-settling works out reasonably well. I mean, yeah, oxy-settling would be cool, I do, but I was working with some thin metal, so I figured it would have just like kind of bubbled and melted. Another thing you might look into, uh, we don't have one here right now, but the uh, Beverly shear, especially if you're in the thin sheep on the Beverly shear is like a, kind of like scissors. Yeah, like a yeah, like I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Those are really yeah, quick, uh, really easy way really of cutting with sheep stock so that's yeah. Yeah. Yes. clean edges. You don't have to yeah. grind them yeah. 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 up. I, yeah, I try to do metal art, so I make like uh, crosses and you know, I make yeah, yeah, like a graphic like, like, so, so that's why I wasn't close to So this is kind of like, wow. Perfect. They had me a plasma cutter. I was like, I'm signing up. Perfect. I mean, I don't it, have to have is the plasma have cutter actually working right now? The CNC one, I believe, is still working on training to get it, but there is a hand plasma cutter as well with the drag tip. So if you got, uh, like that you drew out by hand, you could just cut it across. Okay. Yeah, because I'm taking the Batman now. I'm going to put Incredible Hulk on there in the front. Kind of like the Ford Raptors, how it says Ford in the front. It's going to be like that, but Hulk. And then uh, it's, my truck's red, so it's going to be the Red Hulk. Uh, General Ross. Uh, I don't know if you know about the car books, but it's pretty, it's going to be neat. But I wanted to put it out with a plastic cutter, so it comes out nice and clean. So 
This is just really cool. So what are you working on here? Uh, that's what it's doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have much of a knife right now. It's alright. No, it's okay. So the blade, the tang is going here. Yeah, you guys just start with a straight bar stone. So it's a little easier to hold on to. I made this a lightning bolt with the steel, and then I had it uh, sitting on a little swirly thing. But that swirly thing was made out of like, just a cheap wall hanger, so it was the rainbow. What is it? No, it was, uh, it was brittle. So the, uh, Tin? No, no. Uh, cats. It was like cats. So, you know, it, 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 uh, I welded it to a three inch height uh, when I grind it up and shiny it. I had a little swirly on there and I put the lightning bolt on top. And I hit, I hit it on the wall and that little swirly because it was cats and it's so brittle. It just broke. Yeah. But, man, it would be awesome to make a little swirly like that. A little steel. And it's not that hard to do either. Yeah. Yeah.